Hi, I'm Dr. Paul. Welcome to another episode of Ask Your Pediatrician. The topic for today is, Doctor, I don't want to give my child any medications for ADD or ADHD. I just, kids are drugged and, and I just don't want to do it. I don't believe in it. I'm with you, but I'd like to add a little bit of information. Um, this topic is dear to my heart. My poor children, three biological sons, two adopted sons, are all severe ADD, ADHD. In fact, my youngest, when he was young, was clearly on the spectrum. I mean, he was so not there that he couldn't learn his alphabet in kindergarten. Kindergarten, first grade, teaching him, okay, son, we're just gonna work on A, B, C, okay? Here's A, he would repeat A. Here's B, he would repeat B. Here's C, he would repeat C. Okay, I'm gonna mix them up. All right, what's this? Uh, G? Ah, right? So if you have a child who's struggling with focus to the point, you know, like, is anybody home? Now, mind you, these are usually highly intelligent children. They just suffer from extreme focus challenges. If, if they happen to have been blessed like I was with the hyper part, you can't stop the foot from bouncing. I mean, my mom used to yell at me at the table right through school age, you know, stop that because my foot wouldn't stop. So you've got a child who's struggling with focus. I mean, you know, if you're the teacher and I'm supposed to pay attention, oh, did you notice there's fish on the ceiling? And oh, it's a pretty day out there. Oh, there's, oh, wow. Oh, oh, wait a minute, here's the, you know, it, it's squirrel, squirrel. And, and, and that brain that just goes chung, 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 chung. All right, when they're little and they're early school age, you can tolerate their lack of success. And they sort of put up with it. My youngest son in third grade comes home and says, Dad, I'm the dumbest kid in the class. Oh, broke my heart. Sweet kid, but oh, was he struggling with learning. Just horrible. He had a bit of dyslexia. We've worked on that. He, he, it was mostly his focus. And I, and I see this. I have almost 600 patients with ADD or ADHD that's severe enough to be totally diagnostic. I mean, these are not mild cases. So I'll have a parent tell me, this, I, I deal with this weekly, you know, I had ADD and ADHD and I was fine, so they just need to buck up. Let me just add a little caveat to that. You and I, so I did too. I was a hyper kid, but I could hyper focus and I could force myself to study. Even though it was tough, I just forced it, forced it, forced it. We had a level of ADD or ADHD that was maybe here with each generation, because the triggers, I believe, are toxins, the level goes up to here, and then it's off the charts. So you're, when you're asking your child to buck up like you did, you're basically tying their hands behind their back, maybe tying their feet together, putting a patch over one eye and telling them, you can do it, son, come on, just buck up. Imagine, all right, you've got a really severe autistic kid, clearly. Now, a lot of these kids are super intelligent, but they're, they're just so anxious and, and socially it's stressful and, and so they can't connect enough to learn sometimes. And you're gonna tell them just buck up, right? Come on, just buck up, I bucked up. No, that's obvious, right? So that's an extreme, but the point is, when you see your child who has ADD or ADHD, for example, or severe anxiety starting to suffer in school, now self-esteem is hitting the bottom, right? I mean, they're just, they've given up. Like my son who said he was the dumbest kid in the class. He was just ready to give up. And I see this over and over and over again. Find a physician who will do everything natural possible. I mean, look at your foods, make sure there's no food sensitivities. Get rid of toxins in your environment, drink filtered water, not too much fish. Make sure there's no vitamin D deficiency, B12 deficiency, other nutrient deficiencies. Reduce stress in their environment, make sure they're getting enough sleep. Provide them with everything you can to decrease stress. And if they're still failing and they're still nobody's home because they're just so not there, why would you withhold a medication that could change their life? Now, if your child had diabetes, you wouldn't withhold insulin. I realize they're different, but here's the thing. The beauty of these meds, and I'm not a big med guy, I don't really like them. My kids couldn't take them because of side effects. The main side effects are either agitation or sleep sleepiness. I mean, my kid who struggled just knocked him out. A couple of my kids kind of went psycho. Couldn't do the meds. So what do they do? Brilliant children who
who don't have huge success in school. Tragic. When your child is starting to suffer from low self-esteem, they're approaching those teen years, what are they going to do? What are they going to do to just try to feel better because they see their peers are having success? They're going to self-medicate. All right, I saw it happen every single time. In my practice, in my family, you have to self-medicate that anxiety, that stress, that feeling of, of you know, the inability to keep up with your peers when you know somehow you should, you know you're smart, but, but you're not pulling it all together. So if that's what you want for your children, then just, you know, just let them tie their hands behind their back and their legs together and, and blindfold them and tell them you can do it. No, I'm being a little harsh here. So I'm not saying that if you don't try medication, your child's gonna end up an alcoholic or a drug addict. That was just a scenario, I've seen it. Um, you know, get a second opinion. If you've tried everything and your child's still suffering and you just don't like this concept of medication, at least get a second opinion, a third opinion. And you know, if you try it and you don't like it, you just stop it. That's the beauty of it. The, the benefits are seen immediately. That day, the first day, unless the dose is too low, which is exactly how it should be, you should start very low dose. You increase the dose slightly, slightly until you see great benefits, or if you see side effects, you back down on the dose. So, you know, I just encourage you to be there for your child, whatever that may mean, and, uh, you know, don't leave them alone struggling with something that actually is pretty significant. There are many ways to deal with ADD and ADHD, and I would use everything you can that's natural. But if you try a medication, we're talking the things like methylphenidate, we're talking the things like amphetamine, it's not methamphetamine, this is the Adderall amphetamine, and there's a few others that are now non-stimulants that can be tried. If the benefits are huge, you take a child who is suffering, who is failing, and now they're having success, and they don't have any side effects, why wouldn't you do that? The reason we're having to do this more and more is not because we love to medicate children. It's because children are suffering so much more than they were before. Why is that? I can almost guarantee you it's this toxic world we live in. Our diet is full of things that are just toxic to our brains, toxic to our immune systems. Our immune systems are attacking our brains, our thyroid. Low thyroid function is bad for brain. It's complex. I rambled a bit. Thank you for watching. Consider medication if you've tried everything else, but do try everything else. I will have links here to other videos and other information that might be helpful to you if you're suffering, your family's dealing with the issue of ADD, ADHD, or anxiety, and it's starting to affect your child's self-esteem and success in school. I'm Dr. Paul. Thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up, like if you like this. Uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. We're going to try to bring more content to you and I'm happy to take questions. Thank you for watching.